Yeah, yes, yeah, the nine o'clock hour. We can uh, we can kind of uh, pull up something a little better. And I switch to my uh, Midland thirteen eight eight five. Everybody give it up on a three knobber. Yeah, well, that was the first hour. The theme usually lasts for the first hour, unless you want to hang in there a little longer. Goofy again. What the heck's up with this microphone? Get to see some cool ass over there, Skeeter. Oh, uh, yeah, they had uh, tons of. Lots and lots of. Lots of cool tools, like factory tools, the whole setup. I'm sure they got them. I didn't see uh, a whole lot of factory stuff around, but I'm sure they have them. And yeah, they probably had set up so you have to sign it in and out. That's right. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, they probably had 20 Cummins engines there, or 30 of them. Yeah, diesels. a pukester. Not like cleaning up animal puke. Yeah, try having four cats. It hurts. It's, I know it's the cat because it uh, it just eats. It just throws up. I don't know why. Fifteen years old or so. Cats are always throwing up. It's in their nature. Well, I'm about ready to put them outside. It's not sounding like a dog. Uh, and <laughs> this portion of Classic Radio Roundup is brought to you by the Zero Five Institute of Amplifier Repair Technology, where our motto is, if you can buy it, we can fry it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, it's a good thing he beat that. I'm going to tell him uh, he saved your life. <laughs> I was daydreaming with one eye open going up the road. I know how that goes, man. Thank God for rumble strips. Yeah, they work great. You know what? I might be. I mean, oh yeah, I am off. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. Checking your frequency. Zika? No. I know nothing. Ah, Sergeant Schultz is here. I see nothing. Pink. Pink? I know nothing. I hear nothing. I see nothing. Pink, I'm going to send you to the Russian front. <laughs> You're going to Siberia. Clink was the guy with the glass one, right? He was the monocle man. Yeah, what was the other one, Aaron? What's that? Sergeant Schultz was the uh, the fat ru ru uh, guy with the helmet. The Russian guy was Burkholder or something. No, he wasn't Russian. He was a German general. General Burkhalter. Schultz, I know nothing. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. They just, just, just don't make shows like that anymore. I don't know. Well, I don't know what ever happened to the creativity in Hollywood, but it's all it's it, they just come up with this lame ass junk anymore. You mean keeping up with the Kardashians is in uh, high quality uh, programming? No. I think my dog puking in the hallway. Or, well, I don't have a dog, but if I had one and it was puking in the hallway, it would probably be more creative than that. Be more entertaining. <laughs> yeah, until you had to clean it up. Yeah, if you're the last guy standing, I guess. Somebody's breaking over the side. I'll let him go then. Come in, boy, girl. Yeah, it's going through. But I guess those guys in uh, PP Town can't hear you. I hear him, but he's kind of weak. Phoenixville, he's using a, a Pinto. 
Well, kudos on the J.C. Penny Pinto. A Ford Pinto? Yeah, I figured it would be a Chevy, but no. Um, he's using a fiberglass uh, mobile antenna. Put it on top of his refrigerator. He says he has it on his roof, but uh, it'd be better if he had a, somewhat of a ground plane along with it. Maybe it would work a little bit better, but... Yeah, you can't put a mobile antenna without a ground plane or the SWR will be terrible. Yeah, I bet that is. So what are you doing over there, uh, you know? Yeah, but it's better off outside. That's pretty cool. We've talked to quite a few folks on the refrigerator indoor antennas here. Captain Paz, where's he at tonight? Yeah, they all need to get something outside when the spring comes around. Put an IMAX outside, and then we'll hear them all. Have you seen the guy that hooked his coax right up to the tree? Hooked it up to a tree? Hooked it up to, I think it might have been a beech tree or a birch tree. It was talking two meters in repeaters on a tree. <laughs> Transmitting off of the sap. That's a real sap story. There's sap if you don't buy that antenna. Conductive sap. Yeah, if you don't buy your antenna from Crash Brothers, you turn my stomach. I thought you were talking about me, Warner Boy. <laughs> no, no, I actually hooked the coax right to the actual tree. It was amazing. I, I was blown away reading the article. Uh, I was going to do it, but then I'd probably be left off the radio. Do you see those antennas that uh, they uh, use uh, with little uh, streams of water? Streams of water, really? Yeah. They squirt them straight up in the air and they can match them up and use them as an antenna. That's awesome. I guess there's probably probably needs to have a little bit of salt in it to make it conductive more. Christmas lights around the tree. Well, when you want to use it as a CD antenna, you just disconnect it from the electric and then hook your two wires on there, and there's your antenna. I did that back in the 70s with my 65 uh, watt amplifier. I could light up a whole string of uh, Christmas lights and nice and bright. And talk at the same time. Yeah, people actually could hear me on it, which is kind of amazing. And this was a tube amp, so like I'm adjusting the load and plate for maximum brilliance on the uh, lights. Yeah. Every time you talk, they flicker. Oh yeah, they would they would flash with modulation. They get brighter when you talk. That's why every time operator says that, it reminds me of that. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I remember having a string of Christmas lights. Powered by RF. RF Unlimited. What's up, Skeeter? and uh, they make you walk around for a few minutes so they can get it ready, so I 
I went over to the, uh, you see it on TV, uh, floor over there, and, uh, they have those charged batteries, you know, you recharge them, but you can charge up your iPads or phones or whatever. They have a 50, or five, what is it, 50, 200, um, I forget what the hell it is, it's, uh, it's called the Mini Max, but it's the highest one they have there, and, uh, 13 bucks. Oh, yeah? She got me one at Costco. I, I haven't used it yet, but, uh, supposedly it'll jumpstart a car or a truck. Yeah, this is a real small one, 52 mil. I forget what the hell it's called, but the 24... Or no, 22. This is the 52, I think. And four. Yeah, I think, I don't know what this was, 8,500? Or whatever it is. I don't remember. But I, I got it for the boat. In case you're out there, you have the radio on a little too long or something. Yeah, you gotta have something. Yeah, it's called a second battery. I got two, but... You don't want to overcharge it. Yeah, it's, it's for charging only. You can't draw from it or or feed it while, while it's doing it. With that battery, I guess it'll blow the hell up. get a charge out of that one. Yeah, still fully charged. How about that? Now what is that, a lithium ion battery? What's that? I said, is this a lithium ion battery or some other kind of battery? I'm guessing lithium ion. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, because they can, yeah, they, they can deliver a fairly good amount of current for a fairly, uh, well, decent amount of time, anyway. It's about the size of a pack of Virginia Slims. You can have one cigarette. Holy crap. That small and it can jumpstart a car? That's what they say. Snap-on has them, and that, I guess the pool guys have them. But I wasn't paying $300. And then I saw this at Costco, and then she got it for Christmas. How much was that one? How much was it? I think it was 59. Something like 50. I think it was around 59 dollars. That's too good of a price, man. There's gotta be something wrong with it. <laughs> well, they had the they had like skins up and this in there. I think it's 8500. How long could you key with that? How long what? How long could you key with that? Like with that thing on your radio for like, you know, 20 second key down or something. Well, it will do the draw of a starter, it'll handle the, the draw of, a, of an amp. Yeah, you would like to hope, anyway. What? What's that? So you would like to hope it, anyway. Well, that's the 
playing. <laughs> I mean, I had the radio on out in the boat, and we're sitting there a few times, and I kind of shut it off after a while because for the fear of not being able to call anybody. Yeah, I used to be afraid to do that too, so that's why I put up a second battery just to just to run the the electronics. And it, you know, when, you, when, it, when it's uh, not running, it's a separate battery. And as soon as I started it, the little solenoid kicks in and puts them in parallel and charges it back up again. Yeah, I got to I got to hook something like that up in this boat because I was I'm in mean, my last boat that I did that, and I I want to have a second battery. I don't trust being out there with just one. With the radio on, I don't trust either batteries. I want to I want to be able to start that sucker. Well, if you have two batteries and one's isolated, then you can run uh, the thing completely down, and you know the other battery is still fully charged, and you can crank the crank the boat over again. Emergency backup. Gotta have a plan. Yeah, gotta have a plan, Stan. on the bus, Gus. Just drop off the key, Lee. What was that? That was a double. You got to drop off the key, Lee. No need to fuss, Gus. Gotta have that. That's the last thing you want is your keys to go OB. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be scuba diving. Yeah, not in 60 feet of water on that. What's the deepest part up there? 60 feet down near the dam. Lake, believe it or not, has uh, got 100 feet depth in some spots. Wow. Now, when I was a kid growing up, we did the Lake Cary up there by Tuck County. They used to tell us that uh, part of that lake didn't have a bottom. That's, that's not possible. I know, but that's what they told us when we were kids. Probably to prevent us from out there swimming around. Yeah. The big monsters will come up from the depths and get you. The Loch Ness. Yeah, it's funny the things grown-ups will tell you when you're a kid to, to try to keep you from doing stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't see it, but they just wasted each other. Yeah, I think this is the last year for my youngest boy for Santa Claus. Yeah, that kind of sucked when the, the Santa stuff stopped. My daughter went pretty far. I think she was probably about 11 or 12 when she finally uh, gave up on it. Cool. I'm going to 
gonna still do that probably forever. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Because you you are by default Santa. In fact, incognito. Santa lives in all of us. When it's time to give gifts at Christmas time. I thought Santa Claus in my house one night put himself under the tree when I was a little kid. Aha. He had everything on. Big red suit, big fat guy. Poked my head out under the, under the, uh, the door had a vent thing. He popped my head out. my head out. They did that all for your benefit. And that's why he's so tall. <laughs> why? Because he tells tall tales? Sounds like it's going to become a song or something. Hey, Skeeter. Yes, sir. Did you watch the voice last night, then? I watched some of it. I watched uh, the guy with the, the older fellow with the guitar. Monday or Tuesday, uh, a guy from Pottstown, his daughter's supposed to be on it. Oh, yeah, from Pottstown. Yeah, one of, one of the teachers at Pottstown High School, his daughter. Oh, wow, well, I'll have to check it out. Well, I thought the uh, Blake and Christine and Adam. Pharrell has all his people on this side already, right? He's all accounted for. Oh, I don't. Uh, this is the first time I watched it was uh, last night. Where's he? he? Might still be in Florida. Santa Claus lives in a project with his old lady, man. <laughs> Santa, Santa, Santa. Hopefully he'll bring me a new pickup truck. Why, what's wrong with the old one?
to spiff it up a little bit. Maybe some vinyl graphics or something. Oh, yeah. I got one of them shots. That's that. Now, is that I don't know. Where's Tickle at, man? He's a graphics guy. He has got a Roland or something up there. I don't know. I just put vinyl in between my B pillars, not the A pillars, where the two doors meet because my truck's white and in between the two windows they didn't put black vinyl there. So I made it look like all one window now. Yeah, boy, you told me about I, I just want something to ride a little better. This thing rides like a wheelbarrow. No, it rides like a three-quarter ton truck. It rides like a two-ton truck. They're stiffer springs. You want a softer ride, you'll have to get out of a a half ton truck. I know, my other one, like, the one I had before that, rode like a Cadillac. They tried like a corn truck. Got some weight in the back. Skeeter, where's all your audio at? Uh, looks like the battery died. Get that jumper thing out. Charge it up. That baby with that 800 uh, amps. There you go. I cranked up the mic all the way. Light flickering a little. What radio is that? Executive. Ah. That does have clean audio, I will say that. Ain't booming loud, but it's clean. Uh, yeah, the battery's probably dead. Go take one of those uh, seven volt batteries. No, I have a nine volt in uh, Nitro 100, Gold Turner Plus 2. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Still got your battery here from how many years ago? <laughs> yeah, that should probably be changed by the